A big problem for new people entering the hobby is they'll bring a fish home and it will just die. And they will have no idea as to the reason. Well, there is a reason. You're that reason. Not always though. This is going to be part of a four part series where I am going to go into the different reasons why your goldfish die. This will include health, water, tank, and care. I didn't mean for my pinky to go up. Just happens sometimes. Where your first problem begins is buying sick fish. I know that fish on the bottom of the tank is all sleepy and relatable and pretty. Guess not so relatable. Avoid fish that are twirling or laying down listless anywhere in the tank or on the bottom. That's very often a parasite infection and you don't need to bring that home. Avoid fish that when they stop swimming, their butt starts lifting up. This could be an indication of an early onset of swim bladder issues. I've brought this up before in a video where people will try to keep the fish stable, but they're just making the fish suffer more at that point. You can try peas, but that is assuming the swim bladder is due to constipation. Sometimes it could be a bacterial infection or just straight up genetic, and then peas are not gonna help with that. Especially if you have an established expensive collection, you definitely wanna quarantine first. Now, you don't need another expensive glass tank to quarantine your fish. A large plastic tub will do the job. Just make sure, of course, it has proper aeration and filtration. Now, some people recommend keeping it up to about a month. That's eh, sort of unnecessary and I'll explain shortly why that is. I would say two weeks is fine. The reason why going into a month is sort of nonsensical is because sometimes the new fish can carry something that it is used to, so it's not gonna affect its health, but then your current fish aren't used to that. And this can also happen vice versa. Now there is a quicker quarantine technique where you give the fish a mild stressor, potassium permanganate. Now in South Africa, we're quite fond of it. I'm not gonna go into too much of an explanation how to use potassium permanganate because it is a very dangerous medication. It is not for newbies. So it's just a normal medicine. And when you're stress testing the fish, you use even less than what you normally would for medical reasons. If the fish has an underlying disease, that little bit of stress should bring it to the forefront. If nothing happens, then the fish is clean and it can go in with your other fish. There's also such a thing as viruses, parasites, and bacteria. Now, I'm not gonna go into all the different symptoms and treatments because then we'll be here forever. Then there is things that can go internally wrong with the fish, such as egg impaction. So the fish just swells up and swells up with eggs and it ends up just squeezing its organs and the fish dies. And sometimes an organ also just gives out due to no fault of your own, like a heart that stops or something. When it comes to figuring out what is wrong with your fish and how to treat it, I would not run to the internet. I've encountered it a couple of times in my practice where people come to the wrong conclusion and then try to treat with the wrong medication. Antiparasite is not gonna help for a bacterial infection. I don't recommend going to your pet shop. The chances of there being an actual fish expert, very few and far between. It's not that they might not be there, but I've also had a lot of people who were laid off a cliff because ultimately they're usually just an employee. Your local fish farmer is probably not gonna be working there. My big advice in this scenario is to track down your local goldfish club because either somebody there will know how to treat your fish or know of a fish vet who would be able to treat your fish correctly. 